By now, I'm sure you've heard of Bitcoin, but to most, it's just a buzzword. They truly don't understand what Bitcoin actually is and why so many enthusiasts think the future of Bitcoin will potentially replace fiat currencies. So today, we'll not only break down Bitcoin so simply that my 10-year-old daughter can understand it, but we'll be looking at the fundamentals of the most popular cryptocurrency to help educate you on whether or not to join the over 106 million investors who hold Bitcoin in their portfolios. It's Mark Thompson from CryptoMade, and today we're talking all about Bitcoin. But before we do, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and turn on notifications so that you receive alerts for upcoming videos where we talk about crypto investing opportunities, including altcoins, DeFi, play to earn gaming, the metaverse, NFTs, and more. Also, keep in mind, I am not a financial advisor. All content we share is for informational and educational purposes only. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's start with the problem Bitcoin was designed to solve. So normally when you buy something, a bank or a credit card company takes a cut of the transaction and those institutions rely on our trust that they will do everything right. However, there's a number of problems with this. For one, transaction fees can start to add up. Two, sending money from one bank to another can be time consuming taking several days to process. Three, there's large companies that control the money supply and they have enormous power, which can lead to corruption, just like we saw in 2017 with Wells Fargo employees creating 1.4 million unauthorized bank and credit card accounts in order to inflate the bank's revenue stream. And four, a government has the power to print as much money as they want. Just take the 2008 recession when the US Congress created a $700 billion bailout package, or look at how the US government has printed 80% of the total money supply just in the last two years. This causes inflation on goods while eroding the value of the currency. And this is why in 2009, Bitcoin was born. Bitcoin created a digital currency designed to solve these problems. While banks have a centralized system or ledger for tracking your funds and who paid what to whom, Bitcoin utilizes a decentralized approach. This means that there's no one individual entity or company that controls the money supply. Bitcoin sends payments peer to peer with no middleman. It's a pseudo anonymous ledger, which means that anyone can have access to it and see all the encrypted transactions and balances that are taking place. But you can't tell who is sending what to whom. It also is immutable, which means it can never be changed or erased. This allows for transparency and avoiding of altered or deleted data. A network of thousands of computers, also known as nodes or miners, from across the world each have a copy of the transactions and is stored in blocks, which make up the blockchain. Now that you know how Bitcoin actually works, let's dive into some of the fundamentals to help you determine if Bitcoin is something you want to invest in. What's interesting about Bitcoin compared to other top cryptocurrencies is that Bitcoin was invented by Satoshi Nakamoto, which is an anonymous name used by the creators. Personally, when I'm investing in a project, I always wanna see a public and transparent management page. This provides credibility to the project and helps determine if their skills and prior experience can help execute on their vision. Bitcoin is the exception to that rule. However, as of today, Bitcoin is the biggest coin representing roughly 50% of the entire market cap of the industry. While yes, cryptocurrencies in general have higher volatility than traditional investments, Bitcoin is the most stable. It also dictates what the rest of the market does. When Bitcoin goes up in price, so does the majority of other cryptocurrencies. For example, when you see a three to 5% increase in BTC, you also see smaller coins move 10, 20, 30, even 50%. However, the same is true for when BTC goes down. Bitcoin also has the largest amount of wallet holders, which means that price manipulation and the chances of a rug pull, like with newer crypto projects, is highly unlikely. If you look at the chart on a macro level, you can see that the Bitcoin price has increased on average 100% year over year. How high Bitcoin will go and if those types of returns continue is remain to be seen. However, Bitcoin enthusiasts believe it can go up to $100,000 per coin by the end of the year and possibly up to $1 million per coin within the next 10 to 20 years. However, in my opinion, a lot of things need to fall into place for that to happen. The first is government regulation. The crypto space is still mainly unregulated. While most believe that government regulation is a bad thing, I actually think having modest regulation will be good. It will help remove the fears and treat Bitcoin as an alternative store of value, bringing more retail and institutional investors into this new asset class. The second is proof of work. Currently, Bitcoin utilizes something called proof of work, which is a consensus mechanism or way that the network of computers have general agreeance and that at least 51% of the nodes on the network agree. The problem is proof of work involves a lot of hardware, computing power, and energy to support the network. 
This provides a range of challenges at scale, from environmental issues, to slow transaction processing, to potential security issues, to high transaction fees. Most new layer one cryptocurrencies use a consensus mechanism called proof of stake, which solves many of the problems that proof of work has. These challenges make it hard for Bitcoin to become a currency we use in our everyday life. So as of right now, outside of larger transactions, Bitcoin is more of an alternative store of value similar to gold. It's worth whatever the next person is willing to pay for it. So the question still remain, can Bitcoin provide more utility than just a store of value? If and when regulation is put into place, how will that impact Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? With no entity backing your Bitcoin like the FDIC and scams taking place with no real course of action, are people willing to take on that type of risk? Will there be enough global adoption that retail and institutions are willing to shift their money into Bitcoin? Only time will tell. For me personally, Bitcoin is about 50% of my overall crypto portfolio. The fact that the overall crypto space is seeing widespread adoption and Bitcoin is growing on average 100% year over year makes me feel confident in the long term. Dollar cost averaging into BTC as another investment asset to diversify my portfolio. So how about you? Have you invested into Bitcoin yet? Again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more breakdowns for other crypto projects, including updates on everything that's going on in the industry.